I have to admit, my initial interest in visual art didn't stretch much beyond paintings. Impressionist, some early watercolour landscapes, and a few more modern works all captured my attention. But sculpture, no. Sculptures of famous or forgotten dignitaries outside town halls, or more recent abstract assemblages of concrete or bronze, all left me stone cold. I might register their presence and walk on. My change of attitude was as a result of a more prolonged encounter with a single work of sculpture in an outdoor setting. It is the sort of thing I would initially have dismissed as two lumps of concrete with holes in the middle. But this work was set on an open stretch of grass in the grounds of Bretton Hall near Wakefield. Close to this sculpture was a bench. At the time of this encounter I was taking part in a residential music summer school and at lunchtime, as a break from the somewhat rarefied social atmosphere, I would often take my sandwiches and sit on this bench. So for 30 minutes or so I would sit alone, looking out over this sculpture by Barbara Hepworth. Two things were important, having the space and the time to slowly develop an appreciation for this work. The first elements of this sculpture I started to consider were the shapes and the geometry. I noticed that the two rectangles were of different sizes, and in fact there was a third smaller rectangle supporting both of them. Also, the rectangles were not actually rectangular. The sides were of different lengths. And the holes were not centred, they were offset, and yet seemed to balance one another. And these circular piercings were not regular, they were tapered in subtle ways. Getting up close to the sculpture, I realised that they were not concrete blocks after all. They were cast in bronze. And as I moved even closer towards the sculpture, I was able to appreciate all the carvings and surface markings made by the sculptor's tools and the subtle surface colour variations. Hepworth once said, you can't appreciate sculpture if you're going to stand as stiff as a ramrod and stare at it. You need to walk around it, get close to it, stand back from it. Over a period of 10 days, I was able to appreciate this sculpture at different times of day and in different weather conditions. I was able to move up close and walk further away. I was able to walk around it and observe it from different angles. So being situated in an outdoor setting can help sculpture come dynamically alive, giving us a range of subtle variations as the light plays on the surface at different times of day in clouds, sunshine, mist and rain. The fact that this sculpture was sited on its own in a relatively quiet open space provided a freedom from distractions which gave me the opportunity for deeper appreciation and contemplation. Because appreciating sculpture takes time. A lot of thought and time has gone into the making of it so the observer needs to make a similar commitment. The more I thought about this fascinating work of art, the more I realised that there were strong parallels with music making. Balance, proportion, structure, motif, variation, texture and so on are concepts common to both art forms. I started to sketch out some possibilities for composition, which unfortunately I never followed through. However, many years later, I'm embarking on a much more ambitious project, taking its inspiration from another of Hepworth's great 20th century sculptures. Barbara Hepworth's Family of Man is sited on a hillside in the grounds of Yorkshire Sculpture Park at Bretton Hall, near Wakefield. The series comprises a set of nine pieces, each representing figures across generations moving from a young girl through to ancestors and ending in an ultimate form. My exploration of this sculpture through music 
has been written and recorded and is available via the links below. This specially prepared series of videos documents my personal interpretation of these sculptures through music making.